Hi, Megan. Hi, Anthony. <laughs> How's it? Good, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Great. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, my name's Megan. <laughs> I'm an artist slash illustrator slash tattoo artist. I love drawing, especially love drawing cute things, especially calculated things. I also love drawing portraits. Um, I love cats. Everything in here is cat <laughs> I'm not sure what else I could say about myself. Uh, maybe where you, you grew up and... Okay. Yeah. I grew up in Worcester in the Western Cape and I lived there until I was about 10. Then I moved to Bunnabelle Park because my parents got a divorce. And when I matriculated, I moved to Johannesburg, which is where I am now. So I was to study at animation school. What do you do for a living? Um, I'm an animator, uh, illustrator, also a tattoo artist. So part-time animator, part-time tattoo artist. Uh, what would you advise somebody who wants to get into animation and uh, illustration? Um, I would recommend, like strongly recommend drawing every day. Make sure your art skills are pretty good. Um, practice all the time. Draw as much as you can. And then if you want to also be an animator, an animator like me, I would start experimenting with After Effects. Take your drawings into After Effects and try and animate things. It's not such a bad program. It looks very intimidating, but it's actually very easy. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go to college or university, there's a lot of tutorials online. A lot of companies do like to see a degree, but in an art, in like, if you've got like an art background, the most important thing is your portfolio, so make sure you draw a lot. How long have you been animating? Um, since 2014. I started studying in 2014. I matriculated, I mean, I graduated in 2017, so since then, it's 2022 now. <laughs> Tell us uh, your experience at the animation school. Um, to like quickly sum up my years, I studied for three years. The first year we did all the like fundamentals of animation, learned all the techniques, all the history, so like 2D, 3D, stop frame, uh, frame by frame, all that stuff. Second year was just 3D, we just focused on that. So the whole process from the design, uh, concept art to modeling, texturing, reading, animating, rendering, the, the whole thing. And in our third year, we just did um, a short film. So we were split into groups, and the whole year, our group would work on a five-minute short film, 3D animated <laughs> short film. All right, so from school to getting a job, how was that? Uh, was that difficult? Um, it was difficult. From uh, graduating at the animation school, to getting a 3D job, it was very difficult. They, no one wanted 3D animators, or if they did, they wanted 3D animators with a lot of experience, which obviously I didn't have. A lot of my uh, classmates actually left the field, 3D, left the 3D animation field. A lot of them do other things now. Some became mechanics, some do gymnastics, they're like coaches, some is, one is a vet right now. Um, everyone did different things. And that's how I got more into the illustration and 2D side, it's just because no one was looking for 3D. So it was very difficult. I had a lot of weird jobs until I got here. Oh, sorry to hear that. That's okay. <laughs> Who's your biggest inspiration artistically? Artistically? Yeah. Um, like uh, overseas, I mean, South African specifically, I can't think of one right now. My best friend actually, my tattoo mentor, she's a huge inspiration to me. Her tattoos are beautiful. Her artwork is beautiful. She's such an amazing person. and. I really aspire to be like her one day. Um, and then other digital artists that I follow on Instagram, for example, um, It's Lopez. I don't know her real name, but her Instagram handle, It's Lopez. She does such beautiful character designs, and I would love to be able to do stuff like she does. Um, tattoo artists, there's a tattoo artist called Kiera Hart. Um, she does cat tattoos in the UK. And that's I so badly want to be just like her. She does such beautiful tattoos and she's a huge inspiration to me as well. How did you get into doing tattoos and what do they mean to you? Um, I actually, uh, when lockdown started, uh, we had to start working on It became very difficult for me to work every single day on my computer because before we worked remotely, we used to have an office and I'd come home and I would draw on my computer because I like to paint digitally. And that was really, it was a really fun thing for me to do. And as soon as COVID hit and we had to work from home, I had to work on my computer. And when I was done with work, I didn't want to keep working on it. I didn't want to keep painting on my computer. So it kind of ruined the drawing for me. I didn't like to do anything in my spare time anymore. It just got kind of depressing. 
Um, and I once I went to my best friend's party and I told her, you know, like I didn't feel good being stuck in my house every day and like I'm not inspired anymore. And she's a tattoo artist, so she told me, well, you know, being a tattoo artist is really fun and I could teach you. And that's how that started. She's my mentor. She taught me everything I know. She's still teaching me. I learn all the time. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, so your work stands out when I look at most of the stuff online. What would you say is the secret? Um, the secret, I think maybe my color palettes. I love using soft pink, sunny colors, very warm colors. I love using yellow, oranges, and pinks. And I think my stuff is also very cute. And I do think my color theory is quite nice, uh, appealing. So I think that's maybe what makes it stand out. Um, I also got like a, a specific style that's kind of a mix between realistic and um, stylized. <laughs> Besides the lockdown, would you say your your job is challenging? Um, I I think so. Um, it definitely does have its challenges. Like nothing, not everything is easy. You know, um, sometimes I have to draw something that I've never drawn before, especially like cars and machines. Um, those are really difficult to draw for me. <laughs> um, and then on the tattooing side. I'm always facing challenges, but I'm still a beginner. So. If people want to get your tattoos, where can they find your studios and how can they get in touch with you? Uh, so I work at a studio called Team's Tattoos. It's in Legari, it's 110 Sussman Avenue. Um, and if you want to make an appointment with me, you can DM me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at Um Or you can call the shop as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> And if, let's say, a recruiter is watching this now and they love your artworks and animations, what would you say to them? Can you sell yourself? Oh, <laughs> um, well, I'm super enthusiastic and I love to draw. I especially love drawing um, happy things that are kind of aimed at a younger audience. So if your stuff is aimed at kids for example i love doing that kind of work and i'm really good at it too and i'm always enthusiastic and i'm always happy and i think i'm wonderful to work with <laughs> um what i've seen about your work is that you really take like a very short amount of time to cover so much work how did you master that technique uh, <laughs> when i just graduated college um, I started working for this guy who, um, they do child author books. So they'll get children to write a little story. And then uh, it's like a whole workshop that teaches children how to write and how to create a story. And then those stories get sent to me or other illustrators. And then we have to do the illustrations for the books. And the deadlines were so extreme uh, with that job. There was a day when I had to do like 11 illustrations for a book in two days. And it killed me, but it, it it taught me how to work really fast. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think it's also it also pairs with a good work ethic. I think I do have a pretty good work ethic. As long as you don't mess around, you're gonna work pretty quickly. But I think passion has to do with the work ethic. Because you love what you do, then you know you always find yourself working, right? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Especially if it's fun work, you want to do it. What would you say to a 3D animation uh, graduate who's struggling to find work right now? Um, in all honesty, um, I can tell you to practice, keep practicing and always update your showreel. Always make sure your showreel is up to date and has like your, your best work. Um, and also don't be afraid to, you know, if you can't get a 3D job, don't be afraid to get something different. Still in like the creative field, but like if you need to go to a graphic design position or like a like an artist somewhere don't be afraid to go don't be afraid to try different programs in that people in your field use so you know you can like <laughs> uh, you have more opportunities that way and you can always do something else until you find the perfect youth job so what would you say to someone who would say uh i will never take a free gig because i'm a graduate i spend so much money on my courses and whatnot uh, it's completely up to you. It's completely valid to not want to do work for free. It's really difficult to work for exposure because it's not fair. You shouldn't have to work for free. But maybe if you're just starting out and you have the zero work behind your name and you're struggling to get a job, if you can afford to do so, 
you maybe you want to do a project for free and then it's something you can put on your showreel but don't do too many for free because you really have to value yourself you know where can people see uh, the work that you do um uh, you can look on my instagram uh, my instagram handles at moving.com a lot of my digital work goes on there um, and most of my tattoos go on there uh, if you wanted to see like my portfolio for instance i have a website it's megan.com or megancomma.com but i don't there's not really other places that i really upload things like the animation stuff i do i don't really upload that anyway are you looking to get an animation gig um not specifically um i don't do 3d animation at all anymore uh because i couldn't get a job in it so i don't really do it anymore i'm more interested in 2d and even then um, 2D animation is fun and all, um, well it depends what kind of animation actually, like motion graphic type stuff can be fun, but I don't do specifically a lot of complex character animation. Um, I love mostly just painting, doing concept art type stuff. So basically you follow your passion, not um, the finance. Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that can be very hard to do. How do you uh, sustain your life uh, when you are following your passion? Because a lot of people will say, uh, passion doesn't pay the bills. Yeah, that's, that's completely valid. Um, when I was still starting out, I was still living with my mom. So she was helping me out a lot. Um, and any money that I got, which is usually very little, um, I would split between helping her and just putting it away and saving. I saved for a really long time to get the flat that I'm in right now. Um, so I, when I got to a point where I was financially okay, I moved into this flat. But it also helps that I have like a really supportive partner, you know, <laughs> so I'm not completely alone. Um, and it's, it's cool to follow your passion, but I mean, I, I do make sure that I have enough money to survive. I won't like completely abandon everything and not have any fun at all, you know. <laughs> awesome. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Um, Nothing specific. I really just hope I'm really happy in five years. I hope that my art is just um, much better. I hope there's a huge improvement in my art, which I'm sure there will be because I'm always learning. Um, but that's really it. I just want to be happy. <laughs> wow. What is your philosophy on life? I'm curious. Um, I just, I think um, people should be happy and comfortable and people should, you know, live like you shouldn't live to work you shouldn't like i feel like it's very much a trend to be passing all the time right now which is cool if you like doing that that's cool but i don't think that's what's like what life is all about and you should your life shouldn't be about hustling it should be you should be able to enjoy it you should be able to sit down and relax and just enjoy your own things you don't and every hobby that you do doesn't have to become a hustle either you should just be able to you know waste your own time you know but like in an enjoyable way <laughs> wow <laughs> Would you say you're living a fulfilling life? Yeah, I think so. I'm living a pretty good life. Um, pretty happy here. I'm doing a lot of art stuff and I, like, I live with my cats and my partner. So I'm pretty, pretty good. <laughs> you mentioned that you, you wanted to be a vet at some point. Oh yeah. Why being a vet? Um, since I was a kid, that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to help animals because I love animals so much. Um, when I was in grade 10 though, um, my cat had like a big, a weird lump on his head and we took him to the vet and my mom told the vet, oh, you know, maybe he wants to be a vet one day. And the vet was like, oh, do you want to watch the procedure? And I was like, yeah, I do. Um, and it was like a big abscess on his head and the vet like cut it open and started squeezing and all this pus came out and I passed out right there. And that's when I knew I couldn't be a vet because I'm actually really queasy. Um, <laughs> I don't like seeing blood and stuff. Uh, tell us about uh, your, your cats. Can you tell us more about that? Oh, totally. I love my cats. Yeah. Um, I have two. One of them is really big. Her name is Charlie. I got her from the SPCA in 2013, I think. So, oh, I, I can't do the maths right now. Maybe she's like seven years old. <laughs> um, she, she's got a lot of health problems. That's why she's so fat, because of all the medication that she's on. Um, but she's generally a pretty happy cat. And then I have another cat, she's about a year old, just over a year. Her name is Wednesday. She's a cute, like, medium haired cat. So I'm looking around, I'm looking for them. <laughs> she's only born with one eye, so she only has one eye. 
which is why her name is Wednesday because Wednesday is Odin's day. Odin really has one on it. She's very cute. Um, yeah. So what I, what I gather from this interview is that you don't have much worry about life and you, you are following your passion. What else am I missing? Um, no, that's totally it. I want, like, I am happy and I do look very happy, but I do like also, I do think about the future like a lot, um, how to um, make things easier financially for myself. Um, but else, you pretty much have it, like I'm pretty happy here. I'm very comfortable where I am. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your time, Megan. Oh, it's no problem. It was lovely having you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>